I'm Dr. Neha Taneja. Today we'll be discussing a very important topic, levels of prevention. This is very important for your MCQs, your Viva examinations and your university questions. Now, uh, how we'll go about it? We'll be trying to solve as many as uh, MCQs related to this topic. Once I describe to you, I tell you what exactly these levels of prevention are. So, the levels of prevention are basically four. The first one is primordial. The second one is primary. The third one is secondary. And the fourth one is tertiary. Yeah, tertiary. Okay. Now, what is each level of this prevention? What do you understand by this? Primordial prevention is uh, that mode of prevention which is done to prevent the emergence of a risk factor. So what are we doing? The risk factor for a disease is not yet there. So we are trying to prevent the emergence of a risk factor. Okay. First let's try to understand the basic concept. What is primary prevention? The risk factor is already present. Okay, so it is done when the risk factor is already present and we are trying to prevent the emergence of a disease. So we are trying to prevent the emergence of a disease. So in primary prevention, the action is taken prior to the onset of a disease and this will remove the possibility that a disease will ever occur. So what are we doing in secondary prevention? In secondary prevention, the disease is at its very early stage, as at its incipient stage, and we are trying to prevent the emergence of complications. That is, we would not want the disease to progress to a stage beyond which it is it becomes irreversible. Okay, so that is secondary level of prevention. And what is tertiary level of prevention? In this, the disease has advanced to its or has progressed to its advanced stages and the complications have occurred. What we are trying to do is we are trying to prevent the emergence of a disability or we are, so here we put down, we are trying to prevent the emergence of disabilities or in other words, we are trying to limit disabilities. Okay, so if you look at the definitions here, in each level we are trying to prevent a certain emergence. Starting from the beginning, in primordial we are trying to prevent the emergence of a risk factor. Assuming a risk factor is not present, in primary we are trying to prevent the emergence of a disease from starting. So assuming that a risk factor is already present in secondary level of prevention, the disease has already started. So we are trying to prevent the emergence of complications. And in tertiary level, we are the disease has progressed to its advanced stage and we are trying to prevent the emergence of disabilities or limit the disabilities. Let us try to understand by an example. Suppose uh, uh, in, in your college, juniors come, okay, freshers come, a new batch joins. How will you implement primordial level? You will tell them that you should not start smoking, you should not start drinking. Assuming that they have not started smoking or drinking till now. So you are trying to prevent the emergence of a risk factor. Smoking and drinking are risk factors for cardiovascular diseases. So that is how we are applying primordial level of prevention. How will you apply primary level? Now they already drink, they already smoke, so the risk factor is already present. We would want we would not want a disease to start. So you would say that you, uh, you should reduce the level of smoking or the number of cigarettes smoked or you should reduce the amount of drinking. Now what is secondary level? How will that apply in this case? Now uh, suppose you meet your college friend after say 10 years, 15 years and you see that already he is still drinking, he is still smoking. So the signs and symptoms of a disease might be there. So now what you will do? You will advise him. You cannot say now that you should stop smoking, drinking. Of course you should say that. But now you will do certain tests like you will do a blood sugar, you will do an RBC, uh, sorry, a, a, a blood pressure test to see whether 
certain changes, a certain disease has started in his body or not. And tertiary level would be when already he has a cardiovascular disease, he has suffered a stroke, he has paralysis, you will try to limit the disability and rehabilitate the person. So this is how the levels of prevention work. Okay, now, so, uh, so now having understood the levels of prevention, there are certain modes of interventions that are applied at each level. I've written it down for you. For a primordial level, we have individual education and mass education. Basically, this is focused towards achieving primary level of prevention only. Now, a question is asked that for NCDs, which level of prevention, uh, which level of prevention is mostly applied? This is an MCQ. So, for NCDs, mostly we do primordial level of prevention. We want to prevent the emergence of risk factors. Now, primary level is the mode of intervention is to health promotion and specific protection. This is asked in MCQ. So, health promotion is what is health promotion? It is the process of enabling people to lead a healthy life, right? So, how are we doing that? We are doing that through health education, through environment, environmental modifications, through nutritional interventions and lifestyle and behavioral changes. Now, all the examples, we will be trying to solve them via MCQs that will become more clear to you. And specific protection is when we specifically focus, like for example, vaccination. How is vaccination a specific protection? Now, uh, vaccination, how it is a specific protection is like you vaccinate a child at 9 months of age, at 9 completed months of age for measles. Assuming that the risk factor is already there. Now, what could be the risk factors? Nutritional deficiency, protein energy malnutrition, vitamin E deficiency. In that case, these are the risk factors for acquiring measles. So that is how vaccination becomes a specific protection. Okay, or a secondary, uh, sorry, a primary level of prevention. There is one exception which is BCG vaccine. If it is given, BCG vaccine is being used for uh, treatment of bladder cancer. In that case, it will become secondary level of prevention because Secondary level of prevention, your modes of interventions are early diagnosis and treatment. So, if we are using ideally vaccination is specific protection falling under primary level of prevention. But if the question says BCG vaccine used for treating bladder cancer, then it becomes secondary level of prevention. So, in early diagnosis and treatment, what comes? Suppose we give DOTS therapy to a patient. To a TB patient. So we are trying to treat the TB patients, right? We pre uh, prepare a blood site for detection of malarial parasites. So we are trying to detect malaria. So we are providing what? Secondary level. Now what is tertiary level? The two modes of interventions are disability limitation and rehabilitation. What is disability limitation? When you are trying to uh, prevent the progression of disease from impairment to handicap. So suppose uh, there's a person who suffers from polio, you do physiotherapy, you provide physiotherapy. In that case, what you are trying? You are trying to prevent the degeneration or weakening of muscles further. So you are trying to prevent the impairment from progressing into handicap. But suppose we provide crutches to a person who is suffering from polio, in that case it becomes rehabilitation. Okay, so in options you have this, uh, providing crutches to a person of polio, is it disability limitation, rehab or something else? It's rehabilitation because you are enabling the person to walk. So what are you doing? You are training him to attain the highest level of functional ability. To understand this better, let us solve certain MCQs. Okay, now let us try to understand this levels of prevention by certain MCQs. Okay, so the first one that you see is uh, a child comes to immunization clinic for hepatitis B vaccine. So now I told you that any, any vaccination is a form of specific protection. Okay, so assuming that the risk factor is already there, uh, the child has come for uh, vaccination. So vaccination becomes automatically specific protection which is primary level of prevention. Unless and until ex exception is BCG vaccine used for the treatment of bladder cancer, that would become secondary prevention because there you are trying to treat, uh, use BCG vaccine to treat bladder cancer. Now second MCQ, health education given in a sum to prevent spread of TB. Now any form of health education becomes your primary level of prevention, right? It is the mode of intervention is health education. So health education given to prevent anything would become a primary level of prevention. 
National health programs of government of India operate at which level? This is very important, guys. So the correct answer to this is secondary level. Why? Because in all the national programs, most like suppose TB, suppose um, uh, uh, vector borne disease, we are trying to make an early diagnosis. Like in, in to, to prevent the spread of vector borne diseases, what do we do? We do active surveillance. We go from house to house looking for fever cases, and we may use RDT kits. To detect for malaria, Plasmodium vivax or falciparum, and we also take uh, blood uh, blood to prepare a slide to know about the malaria parasite. So most of them operate at this level. Dots dots is again an example of treatment, right? To prevent TB. So most national programs fall at secondary level of prevention. Next, iodine salt supplementation is primordial, specific protection, discipline limitation, or secondary prevention. So iodine salt supplementation is doing what? To prevent from iodine deficiency disorders. So this is a specific protection. We are trying to specifically protect by giving iodine, right? Iodine supplementation. Similarly, you could be asked about, uh, let's say, chemoprophylaxis. So chemoprophylaxis is also a way of specific protection, right? So it'll, it, uh, the correct answer to that would be specific protection. Now moving to some other MCQs, very important, screening. Screening is which level of prevention? Now screening is done in an apparently healthy population to look for missing cases, right? So what are we trying to do? do we are trying to uh, make an early diagnosis. Early diagnosis comes under which level of prevention? Secondary level of prevention, right? We are already assuming that signs and symptoms are there. Maybe the disease has started. It's at its early incipient stage. We want, it to, we want to prevent it to progress further. So screening is an example of secondary level of prevention it's done to make an early diagnosis. Here I have put an example for you performing pap smear. Why do you do pap smear on a woman to screen her for which cancer? Cervical cancer. So we are trying to make on in any sexually active woman we recommend a pap smear at regular intervals. Why? We are trying to make an early diagnosis of cervical cancer. So this comes under secondary level of prevention. Looking at some other examples, school health checkup. Why are we doing a school health checkup? To make an early diagnosis of any disease that might be starting, like uh, refractory checkups, right? Right. We want to see whether the person, uh, whether the child might be progress, might be needing spectacles, right? So school health checkups or health camps, all these we are try trying to, we are we are doing to make an early diagnosis of any disease. So all this comes. Uh, they form secondary level of prevention, okay? Uh, example, another is psychotherapy. Psychotherapy is which level of prevention? Again, psychotherapy is specific protection. So, it is primary prevention. Um, okay, pasteurization of milk. Again, it's specific protection. So, it is primary level of prevention. Now, target group and secondary prevention is what? Is it people who do not have the disease, people who have disease? Yes, of course, it's individuals with established disease. It's just that the disease has started. We want to arrest it at its earlier stages. So today I've tried to teach you about levels of prevention by using certain MCQs as well. I hope uh, this will make your concept clear. If you have any questions, um, do put in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching.